I am Lakshmi Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about instruction set of 8086 microprocessor. Here, for any microprocessor, the instruction set will be different. So, any programmer, in order to write the assembly language programming, they have to follow particular target microprocessor. Instruction set means the instructions that can be understand by processor. So, in order to write the assembly language programming, instruction set and addressing modes plays the major role. In the previous lecture, we have seen about the addressing modes. Addressing modes indicates the way of locating data or operands or in how many ways the operands can be accessed by an instruction. Now, coming to the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor, in this session, we are going to see about data transfer instructions. So, generally, this instruction set will be classified into different types. Here, we need to discuss in detail about data transfer instructions with examples. So, totally, in this lecture, we are going to see the instruction set classification and data transfer instructions in detail along with examples. Now, so before going to the instructions discussion, we need to know first what is instruction and what is meant by instruction format. So, we have to use the instructions in order to write the assembly language program. So, any instruction will be having the format so, first, if it is the general format, so first part of the instruction will consist of opcode and the second part will consist of operand. So, here the term opcode, opcode indicates the type of operation that should be performed. So, for example, if you take move, add, exchange, all these instructions says the type of operation sh that should be performed. So, all that comes under opcode. So, simply to say under opcode, all the mnemonic comes here. So, this opcode indicates the type of operation that should be performed. And here, the second part of the instruction is operand. So, here the operand says on which variables this operation should be performed. So, this operand includes the data, registers, memory location, etc. Now, so if you see here, this is a 16-bit instruction format. So, the 16-bit instruction format also is divided into two parts. So, one part comes under opcode part and the other part comes under operand parts. So, here totally in a 16-bit register, if you consider, only 4 bits will be coming under the opcode part. The remaining bits will be related to the operand part. Now, so here coming to the classification of instruction set, it is classified into different types. So, the first one is here data transfer instruction. So, here this data transfer instruction indicates these instructions are used to transfer the data from source location to the destination location. So, here if you consider some uh, examples that comes under this data transfer instruction. So, move, push, pop, exchange. So, all these are some of the instructions that comes under data transfer instructions. So, whatever the instructions that comes under data transfer instructions, when these instructions are executed, there will not be any effect on the flag register. 
and next classification is arithmetic and logical instructions so these instructions are used to perform the arithmetic and logical operations so here for example the instructions that comes under this uh, arithmetic and logical instructions are so arithmetic instructions like add add with carry subtract subtract with borrow increment decrement so all these comes under all these are some of the instructions that comes under arithmetic and logical operation so here logical operations will include and or xor not so these instructions comes under logical instructions so totally this arithmetic and logical instructions are used to perform the arithmetic and logical operations so during this arithmetic and logical operations the flag register will be affected and next classification is program control transfer instructions so in this program control transfer instructions the control will be transferring to some predefined address or the control will be transferring to some address what we have specified as a part of an instruction so here some of the instructions that comes under this uh, uh, program control transfer instructions are so here jump call return so all these are some of the examples comes under program control transfer instructions and next classification is machine control instructions so here this machine control instructions are used to control the status of cpu or it is used to control the status of a machine so here some of the instructions that comes under machine control instructions are like halt wait lock nop that is no operation so all these comes under machine control instruction so these instructions will control the status of a machine that is cpu and next classification is shift and rotate instructions here by using this instructions the shifting and rotating operation can be performed so the shifting can be done either left shift or right shift or the rotating can be done either right side or left side so whatever the shifting or rotating operation it will be performed only bit wise so here are some of the instructions that comes under this shift and rotate instructions are shift left shift arithmetic left shift right shift arithmetic right and uh, some uh, rotate instructions like uh, rotate right rotate left rotate right with carry rotate left with carry so all these are some of the instructions that comes under shift and rotate instructions so the shifting or rotating operation will be performed only bit by bit here and next classification is flag manipulation instructions here the instructions that comes under this flag manipulation what they will do means they will be telling the status of the flag register so here this flag manipulation instructions are used to manipulate the bits in the flag register format so some of the instructions coming under this flag manipulation instructions are so clear the direction flag set the direction flag and uh, set the carry bit clear the carry bit so all these are some of the instructions that comes under this flag manipulation instructions and next one is string instructions so the instructions here uh, coming under string instructions they are used to perform the string operations string manipulation operations like uh, moving a uh, block of data from one location to other location so in order to perform all these operations especially we will use string instructions like uh, so move sb load string byte 
compare string byte and here rep repeat so all these are some of the instructions that comes under string instructions now so this is the classification of all the instructions that are present in the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor but in this session we will discuss in detail about all the data transfer instructions available in 8086 now so here first we need to know what is meant by data transfer data transfer that means transferring the data so transferring the data will be from source location to the destination location so all the instructions that comes under this data transfer instructions are used to transfer the data from source location to the destination location here another uh, point is so in place of source what we can have in place of destination what we can have that means whether you can have register or whether you can have memory location so all these rules we have to compulsory follow while using the data transfer instructions. So, in place of source and destination. Now, so here, generally this data transfer instruction, it is used to transfer the data from source to destination. Here, from memory to internal register, that means from memory to internal register, the source may be memory, the destination may be internal register one case we can have this combination generally here mnemonic and here comes soon after mnemonic comes destination and next part is source so in place of source and in place of destination what can be considered so here the first case is memory to internal register so we know in all the cases the data will be transferred from source to destination only. So, in place of source, you can have memory. In place of destination, we can have internal register. And another combination we can have is, the data can be transferred from internal register to memory. That means, here in place of source, we can have internal register. And in place of destination, we can have here memory. And the data can also be transferred from one register to another register. That means here the source and destination, both the locations may be of register only. But here the register should be of same size. And so the data can be transferred from input port to the internal register. That means here in place of source you can have any port address. And in place of destination, you can have any internal register like AX, BX, like that. And another way is the data can be transferred from internal register to the output port. That means in place of source, we can have any internal register. And in place of destination, we have to use port address. And so, in all these uh, combinations, you can have source and destination while using data transfer instructions. And next. So, the first data transfer instruction we need to discuss is about MU instruction. MOV, MU instruction. So, this MU instruction is used to transfer the data from source location to destination location. So, we have to see that in this case also what we have to use in place of source and what we have to use in place of destination. So here it is move instruction is used to transfer a byte or word from register to register. That means you can have both the source and destination registers only. So if you are using in source register size 8 bit, in destination also the registers what we have to use is also 8 bit only. So, for example, if you are going for source register 16 bit, we have to use destination register size also of 16 bit. And the data can be transferred from memory to register. So, in place of source, you can have memory. In place of destination, you can have register. So, if you use MU instruction, the data can be transferred from memory to register in this case. And next, you can also have 
register to memory data transfer that means in place of source you can have register and in place of destination you can have memory or immediate addressing so you can also go for immediate um, addressing mode like move ax comma 1 2 3 4 okay so that 1 2 3 4 is represented directly as a part of an instruction so it comes under immediate addressing mode so like that also you can use for example in place of source you can consider any immediate data whereas in place of destination you have to use the register so in all these cases you can use the mu instruction now so this is the general format of mu instruction so whatever the instruction we are learning about first we have to learn what is the general format of that instruction so here this mu is the data transfer instruction which is used to move the data or copy the data from source location to the destination location. So here destination and source. So this instruction is used to move the content that is present in source into the destination. But while selecting this source and destination, we have to follow all these conditions. Next. So here that is what we have said the size of source and destination registers both should be of same size. So if we are using in place of source the register which is of 8 bit in place of destination whatever the register we are using its size should also be of 8 bit only. If you are using 16 bit register in place of source you have to use 16 bit register only in place of destination. So see that both the register sizes in place of source and destination should be same. Then only the data whatever we are transferring will be able to fit in the destination. Now, so during this uh, data transfer instruction move, flags in the flag register will not be affected. So why? Because here flags will not be affected due to absence of ALU. That is arithmetic and logic unit. So, in this instruction, we are just transferring the data from source to destination. There is no involvement of ALU here, no arithmetic and logical operations we are performing. So, that is why in this MU instruction, if you are using, the flags in the flag register will not be affected. Now, so here we will see some of the examples of MU instruction and what we can use in place of source and what we can use in place of destination. So as we know, the general format of MU instruction is MU destination comma source. Now, so this is one combination here. So MU BX comma 0, 0, F2. So that 0, 0, F2, it is a 16 bit value. And here you are using a register, BX register. So this 16-bit value will be able to fit in that 16-bit register. So we have also learned that while using this MU instruction, the data can be transferred from register to register, memory to register, or you can go for using immediate addressing mode. So for example, if you see this example, it comes under immediate addressing mode. It comes under immediate addressing mode. Okay. So move BX comma 0, 0, F2. H represents it is hexadecimal value. Now, if this instruction is executed, what is the function that is going to be performed? Here, here the 16-bit data that is 0, 0, F2 will be moved into BX register. So this is the operation that is going to be performed. And next, you can also use move instruction like this, like move CL comma 2000H. So, but here this 2000H is represented in the brackets. So, what it represents here, it is a memory location. 
it is a memory location but here the register size what you have used is cl so you know cx is a counter register it is a 16 bit register you can use that uh, 16 bit cx register as cl and ch so where cl will be carrying the lower order 8 bits so since you are moving the content which is present in this 2000h location into cl it may be only 8 bit data now so the operation performed by this instruction if you see move the content present in 2000h location into cl register or we can write move the 8 bit content you can say why because you are using cl register so here move the 8 bit content present in 2000h location into cl register and next case here move 589h so this 589h is kept in the brackets so that means that it is also representing the memory location comma bx so here bx is a 16 bit register we are using that means here this is a register which is holding the 16 bit data so when this instruction is executed the content present in this bx register that is 16 bit content present in this bx register will be moved into 589h so 16 bit value present in bx register will be moved into 589h location so in this case while learning move instruction we have studied that the data can be transferred from register to the memory location so that is the case the data present in this register will be moved into the memory location so here whatever the contents you are seeing here all these comes under source and here soon after the mnemonic you are observing in place of operand as destination and next move ds comma cx so here we have said the content can be moved in between two registers so here this cx is a 16 bit register and this ds is another 16 bit register so in this case the data will be copied from cx register to ds register so here 16 bit registers both are so the 16 bit value present in cx register will be moved into ds register so all these are different combinations you can go for selecting in place of source and destination while using move instruction next another example under move instruction is move ds comma 5000h so here move ds comma 5000h so as we have learned in the move instruction the data can be transferred from memory location to the or from any immediate value can be moved into the register so but here this case if you consider this comes under invalid this is the invalid combination because here in place of registers we have used the data segment register and whereas this 5000h is a immediate value so whatever the register you are using in place of a destination it should not be the segment register then what is the correct uh, procedure we have to follow to execute this instruction means here you can write first move ax comma 5000h that means first the value should be moved into the general purpose register that is why you are using this 5000h moving into this 
ax register and then you can write here move ds comma ax you cannot move the immediate value directly into the segment register so instead of that because it becomes invalid instead of that first you have to move that value into the general purpose register and from that general purpose register you have to shift that value into the data segment register so this is the correct procedure you have to follow in order to move an immediate value into the segment register and next data transfer instruction is load instruction so under load instructions you have different classification like uh, um load the data segment load the extra segment load the effective address so all these are different uh, load instructions that comes under data transfer instructions here generally load instruction means the contents whatever they are present in the source will be loaded into the contents of destination now here the first load instruction what we are going to see is lea so here lea lea represents load effective address load effective address so this instruction is used to load the address of operand into the provided register so next if you see here in place of source and destination while using lea instruction you can have register and register that means here the effective address from the register which is placed in the source will be moved into the destination or another combination you can have is lea register comma memory that means here the effective address which is present in this memory will be loaded into another register here so for example if you go for this uh, load instruction lea bx comma dx is represented then what is the type of operation that is going to be performed when this type of instruction is used so as we have seen the general formats of lea instruction lea register comma register is the valid instruction format so here lea bx comma dx is used so both are registers both register size is same so that is why here you can use bx comma dx so in this case how the instruction is going to be executed so this lea instruction is going to load the contents present in dx register into bx register so for example assume the content of this bx register is 0000 in the same way here assume the contents of dx register is 0001 now if this lea bx comma dx instruction is executed the effective address which is present in dx register will be loaded into bx register so in such a case the value of bx will become 0001 so this is the operation when this lea bx comma dx is executed and another combination or general format what we have studied when this lea instruction is used means lea register comma memory location we have studied so here in the register part we have used bx in the memory location part we have used this start and si generally this start we can consider as a displacement so here when this instruction is executed what will be the operation performed means so consider here the value of bx or the value here start for example consider it is 0040 for example it is a displacement and next the value of si for example 3 to ff now so how to find the effective address of this instruction that means total offset address how to find here this is 32 ff 
plus 0, 0, 4, 0. So, what is the value you will get here? So, 3, 2, F, F and 0, 0, 4, 0. So, here F plus 0 is F and F plus 4. So, generally F means it is 15, 19. The value is 19, F plus 4. But in the hexadecimal, we have to see it is 1, 3. So, here comes 1 and this is 3. And next 2 plus 1 is 3 and 3. So, here the address value is 3, 3, 3, F. This is the value of totally start and SI value. Okay. Now, this effective address will be loaded into BX register. So, the value of BX register will become 333F when this instruction is executed. And next load instruction is LDS. LDS. So, LDS stands for load data segment. Load the data segment. So, here this instruction is used to load the data segment register and other provided register from the memory. Now, so if you see the general format of LDS instruction, so you can have here LDS register comma memory. So, that means in place of destination, you can have register and in place of memory, in place of source, we can consider memory. Generally, what is the total operation that is going to be performed means, when this LDS instruction is executed, first the memory will be loaded into a register, then the value of register will be loaded into the DS, that is memory plus 2 value. Okay, So, first memory value will be loaded into the register, but memory plus 2 value will be loaded into the data segment register. So, here this is the first operation that will be performed. So, when this operation is executed, the content present in this memory will be stored in the register. But what will be loaded into the data segment? Memory plus 2 content will be loaded into the data segment. Now, let us consider a simple example during this load instruction in order to understand how the memory content will be loaded into the register and how the register content, that means memory plus two contents will be loaded into the DS register. Now, consider here, uh, when this uh, LDS instruction is executed, so for example, consider here LDS BX comma SI. So, for example, if this is the uh, instruction what you are taken, when this instruction is executed, what is the operation that is going to be performed? What memory content will be loaded into the register? How memory plus 2 content will be loaded into the data segment? Now, so when this instruction is executed, so consider here uh, the value of SI. So, for example, consider the value of SI is 2000. As we know, when SI register is used as an offset address, by default, you have to use data segment as a segment address. So, for example, consider the value of the data segment is 5000. So, SI value is 2000. Now, so how to calculate the physical address? What is the formula to calculate the physical address? So, we know that physical address calculation formula that is segment address into 10 plus offset address. So, here segment address into 10 plus offset address. So, here anyway the segment is 5000 into 10 plus offset address is 2000. So, total effective address is 52000. We know it is a 20 bit register. Now, so here consider the operands located in this 52000 and 52001, 52002 and 52003 locations are so for example here if it is aa in the second location bb 
CC and DD. Now, how the operation is going to be performed? So, for example, this is the physical address calculation, the value what we got. Now, here BX is the register. So, what will be stored in the register? What will be stored in the register means, in a register, that is a BX register, so first AA will be stored and BB will be stored. Because here, this is AA, it will be stored in the lower and this BB, it will be stored in the higher. This memory will be stored in the register. Now, what will be loaded into the data segment means memory plus two contents will be loaded into the data segment. So here memory plus two. So generally this is 52,000 is the physical address. So memory plus two means it becomes 52,002. And here these are the contents that will be loaded into the data segment. So in the BX register, you can observe this value. Whereas in the DS, we can observe the value like DD, C, C. Because these are the memory, this is plus 2 means it will be starting from 5 to 0, 0, 2. And next load instruction is LES. So LES is similar to LDS. So DS represents data segment and ES represents extra segment. So both are used to store the data only in that particular uh, segments. Each segment is of 64 KB. So the operation will be same as load data segment only. Like uh, the general format LES, register comma memory. So what will be loaded into the ES means, first the memory will be, location will be loaded into the register. Memory plus two contents will be loaded into the ES, that is extra segment. Same as LDS instruction only. Now, so this is a LES general format. So for LDS also, the same general format only. And next type of load instruction is LAHF. L represents load, AH represents accumulator and F stands for flag. That means load flag register contents into AH register. Load the flag register contents into AH register. But as we know here, the flag register generally, it is of 16 bit. But generally if you take this AH register, it is only 8 bit. So what it represents here, load the flag register contents into AH register means only 8 bits in the flag register will be stored in the AH register. So which 8 bits of flag register, especially in the flag register, lower 8 bits. Lower 8 bits in the flag register will be stored in AH register. So why, why what is the importance of uh, considering only the lower bits of the uh, flag register means? Because in the lower bits of the flag register only, we have all the conditional flags. That is why you have to consider the lower bits or the lower byte of the flag register and only that byte should be loaded into AH register. So that is the importance here. Why to consider only lower order bits in the flag register. And next here is push and pop instructions. So first we need to know what is the importance of push and pop instructions. Okay. So if we consider here push and pop instructions, generally where we will use this push and pop instructions means, for example, if we consider this is the main program, this is the main program. Okay. So in this main program, it may be consisting of some set of lines. So for example, if there is a if there is control transfer instruction like call MUL, that is if you are writing any sub program in order to execute the multiplication operation, 
Even this multiplication operation, small program will consist of some set of instructions. So at the end of this sub program, compulsory you have to write the instruction written. Now, so while writing the main program, we might have used some registers like AX, BX, CX, like this. And we might have stored some content in that registers. So for example, while uh, executing the main program, assume for example, you might have used the register AX and you might have moved the content FFFFH into AX register. And while writing this sub program again, you might have used the same register AX, what you have used in the main program. And in the sub program, you might have loaded the value of AX with 0, 0, 0, 0, H, for example. Now, after executing this uh, sub program, since here return is there, again, after complete, uh, completion of executing this, the control will be again moving to the main program. Okay, so the when it is going to the main program, what happens? Previously, the value is FFFH. But now the value is 0, 0, 0, 0, H. The contents of accumulator will be not FFFF. The contents of accumulator will be loaded with 0, 0, 0, 0, H. Because this is the operation that has done after this. That is why the processor will be storing all the fresh contents in the accumulator. So here, this value will be stored and based on this value only the next operation will be executed. So problems comes here. So that is why what we have to do means in order to store all these uh, previous contents, what we have to do means you have to go for using the stack. We have to go for using the stack. Okay. So here while using the stack, before going to this uh, sub program, the processor has to store the contents on the stack. So how it is going to store the contents on the stack means by using push instruction. And while the control is going from sub program to the main program again, the processor has to retrieve the contents from the stack. So retrieving the contents from the stack is done by using the pop instruction. So using this pop instruction, the contents can be retrieved. So if you are using stack, the contents of uh, accumulator will not be 0, 0, 0, 0. So the contents of accumulator will not change. It will be same as FF, FF. So this type of problems can be avoided. So you have to go for using stack by using push and pop instructions. Now, so let us discuss in detail about this push instruction. So here, while performing this push operation, first it is going to decrement the stack pointer by 2 and then only the content is copied from source to the location where the stack pointer points. Now, here the source must be of word size data. That means the source, whatever we are selecting here, either register or any memory location, it should consist of word size data only, that is 16 bit data. So while selecting the source here, what are all the content, what are all the uh, conditions we have to follow means in place of source, you can have general purpose register like AX, BX, CX or DX, or you can have any of the segment registers. We have four segment registers, any of the segment register can be placed or memory location. So any of these combinations we can go for. And next is, so here the push instruction, first it is going to push the most significant bit to SP-1 location. Then only it is going to push the least significant bit at the location SP-2. Here, this push instruction also does not affect any flags because we are not using any ALU here. That is why the flags will not be affected. Now, so here, the contents will be moved from source to the stack, to where the stack pointer 
points. Now, so if we consider this is the example, so we are using here stat pointer. So when stat pointer is used in order to represent the offset address, so compulsory here stat segment register should be used. So that is why based on this SS and SP, it is used to calculate the 20 bit physical address. So here if you consider this is the stack when this push instruction is executed. So here push AX is written. Push AX. So in place of source, we have used here word size register. Word size register. So AX is 16 bit register which is divided into AL and AH. So assume the data which is present in AL is 22 and AH is 55. So when this push instruction is executed, what will be stored in the stack means first it is going to store 55 that is at SP minus 1 and next MSB bit that is 22 it will be stored in SP minus 2 location. Now some of the examples of push instructions are considered here. So push CX is written here. So push CX represents See here, CX, it is a word size register. So in place of source, you have used general purpose register. Push CX. So what is the operation that will be performed? As we know the push instruction, first it is going to decrement the stack pointer by 2 and then the contents will be copied from source to the location where the stack pointer points. So if this push CX is executed, decrements, decrements, stack pointer by 2 and then copy the content from CX to the stack. So this is the operation that will be performed. And next one is push DS. Same here. So here you have used a general purpose register in place of source during push instruction. So in this case we are using segment register in place of source during push instruction. So push DS means same decrement stack pointer by 2 and copy the content from DS to stack. Now, coming to the pop instruction here, pop instruction is used to retrieve the contents from the stack. So, after retrieving the contents from the stack, the stack pointer will be incremented. So, this push and pop instructions operation is same, but it is opposite. Like here, if you see the pop instruction, what it is going to do means, first it is going to copy the word from the stack to the location where the stack pointer points to the destination. So after copying only, it is going to increment the stack pointer by 2 automatically. Now, so here in place of destination, so push destination, sorry, pop destination is the general format. Push source is the general format. While using here pop destination. So in place of destination, what are all the things you can consider means? So you can have any general purpose register in place of destination or we can have any segment register in place of destination or we can have memory location in place of destination. Now, so the execution pattern and all is very similar to the push instruction. So here the stack pointer by the stack pointer to the destination. And if you see the example here, pop CX is written. This CX is a word that is 16 bit data. And here if pop CX, it is a general purpose register in place of uh, destination we have used. When this instruction is executed, First, what it will do means copy a word from the top of the stack 
to CX register. After copying a word from the top of the stack to CX register, what it will do? It will be automatically incremented by 2 and increments stack pointer by 2. So, this is the operation that is going to be performed when this instruction is executed. So, if you see here, this is the example. Here same stack segment and stack pointer are the registers they have used in order to calculate the physical address. So using this pop instruction we are going to retrieve the contents from the stack. While retrieving the contents, while taking off the contents, what will be first taken off means this 22. That is a LSB bit will be taken off first and it will be placed in AL register and next 55 MSB bit will be taken next and it will be placed in AH register and that is what about push and pop instructions. Next instruction is about in instruction. So this in and out instruction generally we will use when the port addresses are used in the instruction as a part of an instruction. So generally this in, in instruction is used to copy the content from port to accumulator. So copy the data from port to the accumulator. So uh, from this sentence itself we can understand what will be the general format. So in from port to the accumulator. So compulsory the destination should be accumulator. Either it may be AX or AL or AH and here in place of source you can have any port address. So this port address may be represented with the help of a register or the port address may be represented with the help of memory location also. Now, so here if 8 bit is read, the data will go into AL and if 16 bit, we have to use AX register as an accumulator. Now, so we can use this in instruction when we are using the direct or indirect addressing modes. So here, for example, in AL comma 0F8H. So what is this 0F8H means? This is a port value. So when this instruction, see here, you are using accumulator. So in instruction is used to copy the data from port to accumulator. So that is why here AL is used. If you, if you are using AL, only 8-bit data. If you are going for using AX, 16-bit data. So when this in AL, 0F8 zero F, zero F is executed, what is the operation that will be performing means copy a byte from port 0F8H to AL register. Copy a byte only. Why? Because here AL register is used. It is a 8-bit register. And next instruction, move DX comma 30F8H. So it means the value of DX register will be loaded with 30F8. And when after this instruction, this in instruction is executed in AL comma DX, what happens means in AL comma DX means here, move 8-bit data from the port 30F8 to AL register. And next in AX, DX, if this instruction is executed, same operation only, but 16-bit data will be moved from that. Why? Because here you are using 16-bit register AX, but here AL is used that is 8-bit register. Next, out instruction. So this in and out instructions, they are opposite. In means from port to accumulator. Out means from accumulator to the output port. Accumulator to the output port. 
So here out instruction is used to copy the data from accumulator to the output port. So that is why accumulator will be in source, port will be in destination while considering this out instruction. Now, so while using out instruction also, you can use either direct addressing mode and also indirect addressing mode. Now, so if you see here the example out 047H, AL. So this 047H, it is the port address, which is placed in the destination area. And if you see here AL, this is the source, which is in AL register. So here out means the content will be copied from accumulator to the output port. So out 047H, AL means copy 8-bit data. So here 8-bit data only. Why? Because here it is AL, 8-bit register. It can handle only 8-bit data. So copy the 8-bit data from AL to port 047H. That is the port given. Now, another one is same. Move DX, 0300H. So, when this instruction is executed, this 0300 will be loaded into DX, will be copied or moved into DX register. So, the value of DX will be 0300H. So, after this move instruction, when the out instruction is executed, out dx comma ax is executed. Now, so what happens means, here ax is a 16-bit value. It will be loaded into dx register. And next instruction is exchange instruction. Exchange. It will be represented with simply XCHG. So, when this exchange instruction is executed, the contents of source and destination will be exchanged. So, after exchanging, the content of source will be equivalent to destination and the content of destination will be equivalent to the content of source. So, when this exchange instruction is executed, the contents of source and destination will be exchanged. Here. So, during the exchange operation, the contents, how they will be exchanged. So, XCHG, destination, comma, source is the general format. So, the contents can be exchanged when between register and register or the contents can be exchanged between register and memory location. But the contents cannot be exchanged between two memory locations. So, while using exchange instruction, see that compulsory one should be memory location Another should be register. But invalid instruction is while using this exchange instruction, both the source and destination should not be memory locations. And so this is the general format, exchange destination comma source. So here the contents of source and destination will be exchanged with each other. Even exchanging between two registers, or exchanging between register and memory location, but not between two memory locations. Now, so exchange BX comma CX. For example, if this instruction is executed, here in place of source and destination, both are registers only. Both the registers are 16-bit registers. 16-bit registers. So the 16-bit value whatever is present in that registers will be exchanged. That means XCHG BX comma CX means exchange the word in CX register with BX register. So for example, uh, if you consider the value of uh, initially BX register is 1, 2, 3, 4 and here CX register is 4, 5, 6, 7. When this exchange instruction is executed, the contents of BX and CX will get interchanged. 
then the value of bx will be equivalent to 4567 and the value of cx will be equivalent to 1234. So another case you can use is exchange AL comma CL. So here also the data can be exchanged between two registers, but here the registers are 8-bit registers. So while exchanging the data, see that the size of the registers what we are using in place of destination and source should be of same size. And next instruction is here XLAT instruction. So, Excel AT represents translate. This instruction is used to translate. That means here, if you see this Excel AT instruction, what the operation is going to be performed means, this Excel AT instruction replaces a byte in the AL register with a byte from the lookup table in memory location. Now, so here, if you see, what is the meaning of this means? What will be loaded in AL? What will be loaded in AL? So if you see here, the contents of BX and AL together will be loaded in AL. So for example, if you see the example under this, uh, sorry, Excel AT instruction. So here, consider the, according to the operation, what will be stored in AL? The contents of AL along with the content of BX. Okay. So, for example, consider the value which is present in AL is 31. And since you are using here BX, that is base register, it will give you the offset address. But segment address we have to consider if you use BX default here as data segment. So, consider the data segment value is 5000 and the va value of BX is 2000. So, as we know, what will be the physical address value, segment address into 10 plus offset address. So, the total value will be 52000. It represents 20 bit physical address. Okay. So, in this, so for example, 52,000. So, in this 52,000, if you consider that there is a data which is available is F1, then what will be loaded in AL? Here, this 31 plus F1 will be loaded in AL because AL plus the contents of BX. So here, what is the value of uh, 31 plus F1? So here 1, 1, it is 2 and F represents 15 and the value here, generally it is 18, but in hexadecimal, the value of 18 is 1, 2. So here, it is 1, 2. But since this is AL register, which is of 8-bit size, only this 2, 2 will be stored in this AL register. Now, so that is the operation of this Excel AT instruction. So in today's session, we have discussed all the data transfer instructions with examples. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.